Hello and, this, hello and welcome. In this problem, we're dealing with the ISLM diagram again, um, or ISLM model again. Uh, in a previous video, we did the first three parts of this question, A, B, and C, uh, where we uh, derived the IS curve and derived the um, LM curve. In this part, um, we're going to move on to part D. If you want to have a look at uh, previous or later problems, have a look at the video description um, to go to that. So in this problem, we're going to be dealing with Part D, which says, uh, suppose that government purchases are raised from 100 to 150. How does the IS curve shift? And what are the new equilibrium interest rate and level of income? So basically, that said is that uh, in the previous part of the problem, we had government spending equal to 100, and we solved the and found the IS curve. Now we have government spending jumping up to 150. So how do things change? How are things affected? So let's recalculate our IS curve. Remember, the IS curve is just, um, you know, income is going to be equal to uh, all the things that we could spend our money on. So in this simple economy of consumption, investment, and government spending. Um, so plug in those values in. Remember, we had an equation for consumption here, an equation for investment, and our government spending. So going through the simple algebra, um, you know, plugging in taxes of 100, um, government spending jumped up to 150. Simplifying things again, we have... Uh, Income is equal to um, 0.75 times y plus 475 minus 25r. Simplifying, we get the following. Uh, output is equal to 1900 minus 100r. Uh, there's a little tricky step there if you're not too comfortable with simple algebra. But if you are, you'll jump down to here, which is output is equal to 1900 minus 100r. So this is our new IS curve. Where before our IS curve, IS sub 1, I'm labeling here. The 4IS curve was y is equal to 1700 minus 100r, and like I said, we calculated that in a previous video. Now the IS curve is y is equal to, uh, so income or output is equal to 1900 minus 100r. So uh, that's our new IS curve. Things are clearly bigger, so we went from 1700 to 1900, so this IS curve is, is uh, shifted outward or to the right. Um, let's find the equilibrium level of real interest rate. So uh, how do we do that? Uh, well, in the previous video, I walked you through in pretty good detail how you set the uh, money supply, so how you set the LM curve equal to the IS curve, which we're doing right here. So here's our IS curve that we just derived, and here's the LM curve. You set those two equal to each other, and you find the real interest rate that uh, equilibrates both the IS and the LM curve. So when you set the IS curve here equal to the LM curve and solve for R, we have our equilibrium real interest rate. So when we do that, we have an equilibrium real interest rate of 7. In the previous problem, when we had lower government spending, we had a lower real uh, equilibrium interest rate. So when we increase um, government spending, we have an increase in the real interest rate. And I'll talk about intuition of that at the end or near the end. So now that we have an equilibrium real interest rate, we now need to find the equilibrium output or income. So uh, how do we do that? Well, once we have um, our equilibrium real interest rate, all we have to do is plug that back into either our IS curve equation or our LM curve equation. You can plug it into either because in either you'll get the same answer. So, uh, you know, I did the work for both here. So plugging it into IS and the LM curve, we find an equilibrium um, output, you know, that is to say Y star of 1200. Cool, so that's summarized here. The new equilibrium real interest rate is 7 and the new equilibrium output is 1200. So where before our initial IS curve uh, went down here and we had equilibrium real interest rate of 6 and output of 1100, um, when we increase government spending, we shift out this IS curve to our new IS curve, IS sub 2 here, and that's associated with higher output and higher real interest rates. So we can kind of summarize what we just had in this ISLM model with an increase in government spending. So G goes up, shifts out the IS curve, which increases real interest rates increases the equilibrium interest rate and increases the equilibrium output level. Okay, so now how can we think about this, right? So we've increased government spending and we have a model to explain what happens to some key variables in the economy. Um, so one thing you could do, right, we plug that stuff into equations and then we solve for R star and Y star, right? So that's kind of a, maybe an analytical or numerical thing. Uh, we also have this here where we have our diagram, and using the diagram we have a nice easy way to think about things. You know, uh, we had a shock that we know increases the IS curve, shifts out the IS curve, 
And then we have a little visual diagram to help ex to help think about how R star changes and how Y star changes. But we should also have an intuition. So I'm going to do my best to walk you through my, my best explanation of the intuition of what's going on here. So um, first off, the IS curve is drawn given a certain level of government purchases. So if government purchases goes up, then that just means the IS curve is going to shift out. You know, for every level of uh, outputs or for every level of real interest rates, uh, output's going to go up when government spending increases. Okay, so real interest rates go up in part due to the crowding out effect, right? As the government spends more and doesn't change taxes, it might, must get this extra money from somewhere, thereby influencing the market for loanable funds to drive up borrowing costs, which is the interest rate. Okay, so uh, think to the market for real money balances that determines the, L, the LM curve. If Y is up, then the demand for money is up. However, the money supply and prices are both fixed in the LM uh, market. Um, so this means that interest rates must increase to equilibrate the money market. So given that increase in government purchases, we've just walked through why uh, R has increased, interest rates have increased. So R has increased, what about output and income? So Y in our model. So there's two forces at play, one that we've already mentioned. So government purchases goes directly to the market for goods and services, which drives Y up. Um, this works through the Keynesian cross model as an increase in government purchases increases planned expenditures uh, in the economy, driving up Y. But also recall that the interest rate has increased, right? So that affects the market for goods and services through investment. So if you look at that uh, you know, investment equation, investment, which is in the IS curve, um, that decreases if interest rates are higher. This is because R reflects the cost of borrowing. So if the cost of borrowing has increased, we'd expect firms to decrease their, invest their investment, everything else equal. Okay, so this fall in investment and subsequent decrease in output partially offsets that increase in output due to the higher government spending, right? So um, we were over here at real interest rate of six. We increased government spending. So if the interest rate was somehow forced to be kept at six, if we were to increase government spending, we'd be jump up to this level of output way over here. So I didn't mark it, but it's some level where this real interest rate intersects the new IS curve. However, we need to think about how the um, increase However, real interest rates, interest rates have gone up. So there's some offsetting, there's some decrease in output from where it would be if the interest rates were, were lower um, that offsets the overall increase in government spending. So uh, basically, the decline in investment is less than the increase in output due to the added government purchases. So overall, GDP in the economy increases, um, and you can kind of see the two effects in the graph. So part one is just the IS curve shifting all the way out to this point. And then part two is the, reflects the fact that real interest rates have gone up. So we have our new level of output right here. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Once again, I'll put in the video description the link to the next part of the question. So part, uh, what are we up to? Part E, I think. Okay, thanks and have a good day. Bye.